Hello everyone, thank you for tuning into Video Entertainment Studios for this episode of Video Movie Reviews. I'm the Nerd Lust Daddy, and today we continue our series reviewing every North American live action video game film adaptation theatrical release. Today we get a break from the Paul W.S. Anderson and Uwe Boll Deluge as we review the 2007 action thriller Hitman. Oh, sounds exciting! Chap hits, let's jump into this one and see if we got us a woo. Now, Hitman was released in North American theaters on November 21st, 2007. Well, looks like they were aiming for a holiday hit here. Oh, daddy. Oh, come on, Pitts. I wouldn't be the nerd lust daddy without throwing in some daddy jokes every now and then. Mm-hmm. Any hoosers. Cha. Like Pitts said, any hoosers, at this time four games had been released in the game series. Hitman Codename 47, Hitman 2 Silent Assassin, Hitman Contracts, and Hitman Blood Money. We're going to use all of these loosely in comparison as after watching the film and researching the games that were out at this time, the film is not a direct adaptation of the series' main plot or any of its storylines in particular. Now the game series plot revolves around man known simply as Agent 47. In the first game, he awakens in the basement of a sanatorium, not knowing who he is. A man speaking to him over the PA system guides him through the sanatorium and through a series of courses designed to test his athletic and assassination abilities. Upon escaping the sanatorium, he eventually joins the International Contract Agency. Now this agency is a global organization specializing in assassinations for hire. They dub this man Agent 47 and assign him a handler. He then ends up going on assassination missions that lead him down a path where he ends up learning his true identity and origins. Further games in the series continue to expand upon the story of Agent 47 by diving deeper into his origins, learning of new people who were either directly involved or that know of Agent 47 and wish to harness his abilities for themselves, and the involvement of an opposing organization that wants to shut down the ICA so that they can take over the space of global assassination. In the film, a group called The Organization gathers young, unwanted children from around the world and trains them to become highly skilled assassins for hire that are sent on missions around the world. One of these children grows up to be Agent 47, who has a reputation for being the best of them all. After completing a mission, he's contacted by his handler and informed that there is a change in plans for the next assassination attempt. Instead of assassinating Russian President Mikhail Belikov privately, he is to instead do it publicly. He hesitates as this is not his preferred method, but eventually agrees. After assassinating Belikov by shooting him in the head during a press conference, he's contacted by his superiors and is told that Belikov lived. 47 is dumbfounded as he never misses, but his superiors are insistent that Belikov survived and furthermore that there is a witness that he must now eliminate. This is also hard for 47 to believe as he's never been spotted before, but he agrees to their orders and tracks down the witness. Upon approaching her for the assassination, he realizes that he's never seen this woman before and thus she can't be a witness. Just then, a bullet narrowly misses him and he spies one of his own attempting to kill him and realizes that he's been set up. After escaping, he tracks down the woman and learns that she is Nika, the former girlfriend and property of Belikov. Furthermore, a man named Mike Whittier, who's a member of Interpol, is hot on Agent 47's heels trying to apprehend him and attempting to convince other members of law enforcement that he is the mysterious man responsible for the deaths of men all around the world. Agent 47 now must attempt to protect Nika while unraveling the mystery of why he has been double-crossed while evading Whittier's attempts to apprehend him. Alright, so we don't have much similar in a direct manner plot-wise to any of the games. We also deviate in regard to his origin, but Overall, we do have a story that deals with a man raised and conditioned to be an assassin. We've also got him working for a mysterious global organization that specializes in assassins for hire. Really, I can't find much to complain about as the film's plot could easily fit within the game's universe, as I could see this type of double cross plot line appearing in them since that's pretty typical for this type of story. I can give the plot a definite hawoo. Pids, what did you think of the plot? Hawoo! Setting and world representation. Again, we have a trained assassin that works for a mysterious global assassin for hire organization. The name was changed, but their function remains exactly the same. 47 has a handler named Diana Burnwood in the film, which is the same in the games. 
The film is filled with action and assassinations that are quite a bit more action-packed than in the games. Even though 47 seems to clearly state in the film that he prefers less direct methods, and in the games you can use direct or subtle approaches to assassination, I think this direct choice is due to it being a film. It would probably be less exciting watching him just poison and piano wire people most of the time in a film medium. Speaking of Agent 47, I can't fault the look here. He looks like the iconic character from the games, from his bald head right down to his three-piece suit and tie. I'd say we got us another Hobu here. Pids, what did you think about the setting and world representation? Hobu! Let's dive into the characters and, as usual, keep it to the ones most at the front of the film as well as the most recognizable celebrity-wise. Let's begin with Mike Whittier. Played by Duggery Scott, probably most recognizable for his roles in the films Ever After, Mission Impossible 2, and the TV series Batwoman. Here he plays the Interpol agent attempting to track down and arrest Agent 47. The portrayal here is one of a man on a mission. At that, one that stands on the side of law and order and wants to bring Agent 47 to justice while recognizing other members of law enforcement may have hidden agendas. The performance here was quite solid and enjoyable. Easy hawoo here. Pids, what did you think of Whittier? Hawoo! Oh, Mikhail Belikov, portrayed by Ulrich Thompson, mostly known for his roles in the European market, you may recognize him from films such as Duplicity, Season of the Witch, and 2011's remake of The Thing. Here he plays the Russian president Agent 47 is sent to assassinate. His portrayal is one of a ruthless and brutal president with little to no empathy or regard for humanity who holds a secret behind who ordered his assassination. The role is convincing and enjoyable, and I enjoyed the screen time with them and can give them a hawoo. Pids, your thoughts? Hawoo! Nika Boronia, played by Olga Kirlenko, who you may recognize from the films Quantum of Solace and Black Widow. Here she's the girlfriend and property of Belikov, who has become unwittingly involved in the double cross of Agent 47. She portrays a sultry and seductive woman who also reveals her pain at being forced into the life she lives. She welcomes death rather than having to continue living the abuse and suffering she's known for years. I really enjoyed this portrayal and found her to be a good source of tension for Agent 47 as she is a temptation to him that risks him losing control of his finely honed, steely calm that is the only thing keeping them both alive. Defina Hawu here. Pids, your insight? Hawu! Agent 47, portrayed by Timothy Oliphant, known for his roles in Scream 2, Gone in 60 Seconds, and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. As Agent 47, he's fantastic. He plays the Stone Cold Killer well, keeping a straight face and calm home from years of training and practice. He rarely lets it up until Nika comes into his life. Even then, he rests back control after tipping his hand. Great portrayal of an iconic character, and one that I can certainly give a haru. Pids, what did you think of Agent 47? Time for our final verdicts. Honestly, I had a good time with this film. While the plot may not have followed the games, it definitely fits into the universe, even if it is a bit stereotypical secret agency double-cross plot that has been seen before in films like Mission Impossible and countless others. Let's go to the Pits first to see what he thinks. Pids, what did you think about Hitman? Hawoo! Agreed. This was actually a pretty good time. While a bit predictable here and there, as well as having just a few areas of humdrum cheesiness, it never fully tips its hand and the action is steady. The performance by Oliphant can't be overlooked either. I'm tempted to say that much like Angelina Jolie is Laura Croft, Timothy Oliphant is Agent 47. I can easily give this film a 70s out of 10s. We're at the top end of above average here. I'd also say that this film technically didn't even need the Hitman license to still be enjoyable, and it's more of a bonus that it does have it. I definitely recommend checking this movie out if you're a fan of the Hitman series, or even just a fan of action thrillers in general. While it's not the cream of the crop, it is definitely enjoyable, without effort being required on the watcher's end. The Pids and I want to thank you all for once again tuning into Video Entertainment Studios for this episode of Video Movie Reviews. If you enjoyed our video, please be sure to comment, like, subscribe, and share to show your support. And don't forget to also check us out and subscribe on Twitch as well as follow us on Twitter. Until next time, I'm the Nerd Lust Daddy, as always reminding you to not be chip fudgers to each other. Body autonomy for all, reproductive rights for women, and peace, love, and happiness to all. And say goodbye to everybody. Goodbye to everybody. <laughs> Pits, you made fun of me for making daddy jokes, you little chit.
I sorry's not sorry's. 